This is the new Ford Everest V6 diesel. It's a four x four, seven seat SUV, and it's one of the most anticipated new models on the market. And you may have seen our extensive Everest range coverage from the launch event of the new model, but this is our first chance to do a towing test with this new one. And we've got one heck of a caravan to do this test with as well. That back there is the Avida Topaz all-terrain van, weighing in at just under three tons. And this is the Ford Everest Sport V6, the second from the top of the model range. Doesn't matter which Everest you choose though, they all come with the maximum brake towing capacity of three and a half tons. So it should be up for the task, is it? Keep watching and you'll find out. Before we hit the road, let's consider what's powering this Everest. It's a three litre turbo diesel V6 engine. Obviously, this is the flagship engine in the Everest lineup, and it comes with a 10 speed automatic transmission and full time four wheel drive. If you're wondering what the V6 brings over the four cylinder versions of the Everest, it's an extra 30 kilowatts and 100 Newton meters. Unbrake towing capacity is 750 kilos. Maximum brake towing capacity is three and a half tons, as I mentioned earlier. And this car has an optional touring pack fitted. Now that costs you about two grand and it includes important things for a towing test, including a tow bar and an electronic brake controller. There's a little toggle switch inside the car, which is integrated, which is quite good. There's zone lighting for the surround of the car as well, a 360 degree camera, which helps parking and also blind spot monitoring to cover the trailer or the towed load, depending on what you are towing. It's pretty handy stuff, but it really should be standard when you're spending about $70,000 on your new new four-wheel drive. Anyway, should we see how it goes when it comes to towing? With this much weight behind, you're always going to feel it to a degree. But one way you won't really feel it is through the powertrain of this new generation Everest V6, because it is immensely powerful. There's plenty of grunt available to you. And if you are, just motoring along at sort of country road speeds, there's never any issues. And even if you do need to accelerate to get up to highway pace, there's plenty of pulling power. Just going up to 100 k's an hour now, and there's not too much fuss from the transmission either, because it's a 10 speed auto and there's plenty of gears to play with. I have noticed that at times it hangs on to a gear a bit longer than you might expect it will, but that's obviously to do with knowing what it's towing and also how much grunt it needs to use at whatever time. Now, as I mentioned, a 10 speed automatic means you've got lots of gears to play with and whether you leave it to the transmission's own logic or take matters into your own hands, that's up to you. There is a manual mode. There's a little button down here on the shifter and plus and minus buttons so you can toggle up and down through the gears. I find that a little bit confusing. I just wish there were paddle shifters. It would just make things a bit easier. And also, it is easy to bump those buttons when you are playing with the shifter, so keep that in mind. Plus, there's another thing about the transmission which is quite cool. There's also a progressive gearing system that allows you to select how many gears you'd like to use. So, say you know that you're only going to be driving in 80k an hour zones, then you can choose to only use eighth gear as your top gear if that's what you want and that's kind of cool because it does allow you to set the parameters of your drive experience a little bit now it also means that it'll lock out ninth and tenth gear so they can't be used but as i've found on the highway and on the freeway it will use ninth and tenth gear a lot more than you'd expect at freeway speed at 110 k's an hour i was sitting in tenth gear at just under 2000 rpm which means this engine just isn't working that hard. The rear multi-link suspension doesn't offer quite as much composure and comfort as the Ranger's leaf spring setup, which likely comes down to the fact the Everest rides on a considerably shorter wheelbase, so it doesn't have the same level of ride stability as the ute it's based on. As a result, the Everest exhibited a bit of porpoising over road undulations, and the rear suspension sagged a fair way down with this amount of load hitched up. It is getting bumped around quite a bit, and that's particularly at the rear, I've noticed that. 
and that's mainly I think because there's not a whole lot of weight at the rear of this vehicle it's just me in this car the cameraman as well but we don't have a load like you might if you're going away for a couple of weeks or if you're going to use all seven seats and if you are going to use all seven seats and have a load then you need to pay attention to the gross combination and gross vehicle masses that you're allowed to use because the payload isn't huge for this vehicle so keep that in mind having said that though the ride comfort is mostly okay like I said, there is a bit of bumping from the rear. I've got the tire pressures all the way up to the indicated levels that they should be, but it is just a bit crunchy and bumpy over sort of less than perfect sections of road. I noticed it even more at urban speeds, about 50 k's, 40 k's an hour, you do really feel a lot of what's going on under the rear axle and the rear tires. At the front, well, obviously, that's where the steering happens as well. It's a bit softer and cushier, but the steering is really light and nicely accurate too. You don't really have to think too much about what's happening, although I have found myself battling against wind a little bit more in this Everest than I did in the Ranger that I tested with this exact trailer a few months ago. Maybe it's a combination of the fact that this has got a taller, more bluff body, and it could be feeling a bit more of the wind pushing on the sides of the vehicle as a result of that. Now let's talk about the noise levels. You can barely hear this V6 engine working. It's quiet, it's refined, and just gets the job done. What you can hear a little bit of is some wind noise from the mirrors, and I've got towing mirrors fitted here as well. You might want to fit a set of clear view mirrors or something like that, but they are going to be noisy no matter what. They're a big contact patch with the air that you're pushing through, so you just have to deal with it. Not too much road noise to speak of though, and that's over regular roads and coarse chip surfaces, which we know are pretty much everywhere throughout Australia. Haven't done any dirt road driving, but that's not part of this test anyway. Another thing I should mention is that I left the Everest in 4A, which is four wheel drive auto, which it defaults to in tow haul mode. That setting essentially chooses where it's most effective to send the engine torque to based on the conditions. There's also two wheel drive, high range four wheel drive and low range four wheel drive as well as an electronic rear diff lock, but our test didn't require us to use those. One way in which the Everest was a lot more confident than the Ranger was the brake pedal feel. It was easy to modulate the pedal where the Ranger requires a bit of guesswork. I was also impressed by the engine braking of the Everest. It held low gears quite comfortably on long descents. Being a modern day car, it has all the safety equipment that you'd probably expect. It did just achieve the five star ANCAP rating in 2022 criteria. So it does have good stuff on that front, including a lane keeping assist system, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, as I mentioned, which covers the trailer as well. You can input how big your trailer is and it'll adjust the blind spot monitoring for that size as well, which is really neat. And it's also got uh, trailer sway control system which will just detect if the trailer is getting a little bit wobbly and adjust things for you to compensate. It works really well, it kicked in a few times while I was driving here today and I haven't had any other issues with the safety systems at all. Although it does beep and bong quite a bit at you and there's always seemingly a warning on the screen that you have to hit OK to get away from. I do find that just a little bit annoying. On your screen now, you're going to see the official combined cycle fuel consumption figure for the Everest V6 models. And you'll also see our real world test figure when it came to towing this big caravan. And that was taken at the fuel pump. And just for good measure, we're also throwing in a real world consumption figure without a towed load. So you can get an idea of what this vehicle is going to be like in the real world. And also, one more thing you need to note. This car has AdBlue, which is just another thing to keep topped up. Another thing to keep in mind. All told, the Everest V6 is a better than competent towing vehicle. It's actually really quite impressive in a lot of ways. I have found that sure, I am getting pushed around a little bit more than I was in the Ranger that I did a towing test with, with this exact caravan, but 
really it's not that big of an issue and for families who are going to load up their big four-wheel drive with all the stuff that comes with a family I'm sure it's going to be a pretty good adventure companion.